Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I'll be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And uh, I'm just going to jump right on into it, alright? So, Cody comes out, and he's so serious, he's in chill clothes. To be honest, I just can't read that guy when he comes out and his with his motivation. I, I don't get it. He goes to a beatdown last week in an, in an expensive suit, and then comes out to nothing in something to get beat up in. I, I, I don't get it. I don't, I'm not going to spend $5,000 to get it all dirty, messed up on that nasty ring. You know, but I guess you buy something off the rack. You know, you could buy it in any Walmart or Target or something like that. You know, you, you know, don't get beat up in that because that's good stuff. Uh, he wants to talk about Randy Orton, the guy who is going to turn on him to get that belt back to create another storyline. That's just my assumption. I'm thinking end game here. Um, if this is the case, it, it would be wise. Isn't it? I'm not crapping on it. You got to keep things going, right? I just hope they can build someone else up to join the top ranks because right now they're just building people up to be good mid cards. So I, I, don't, I don't see the point of it. Cody is going good in on Solo Sokoa, even calling out the cuteness of the enforcer Monica as it relates to Arn Anderson. Then, for some reason, the kings of the mid card come, uh, by WWE standards come out, A Town Down Under or ATDU. I paused it. I, I had to. I had to go get something to drink. But I paused and I came back and I looked at them. I was like, man, they they look a little bit too similar. Theory must. I, I assume that Theory must be the guy that's heavily bearded. Uh, they blame Cody for Jacob attacking Theory. And I was like, okay, it's too illogical. It, it's too illogical. You're the one that made it. And Cody's like, um, you, you got that bruise that on your face because your partner slammed a knee right into it. So, you know, don't, don't be blaming me. And besides, Jake was the one that messed him up. It's like, you, that sounds like a weak coward. Like, this dude came in and messed me up. So I'm going to blame you. I've, I've literally been in that situation quite a few times in my life. So. Yeah, I'm like, you blaming me for what somebody else did? What's your problem? In any case, Cody just, he just started kicking their ass. And justly so, because it was just so stupid. They got the upper hand for a little bit. And then the actual prize fighter who's out there in the in the crowd slated for a fight soon, I, I suppose. He hands, a, hands Cody a chair and then it got ugly after that. He did the whole RVD thing, tossed the chair to the guy. I think it was Waller. Uh, I can't really remember. I just remember seeing, like, the square head and the same body. Uh, but it took forever. Springboard kick to the chair. It took too long, and this was for nothing but a celebrity aid that wasn't even needed. And I'm thinking he, got, he must have got paid for that. It's like, show up here, and we can use you to boost ratings or something that SmackDown doesn't even need in the first place. I mean, SmackDown getting all the, the good ratings. Um, yeah, I guess it's like they somebody says, hey, man, guess what? That, that that boxing dude is there. So people that love boxing will be like, oh, I know that guy. Let me turn in and see what he's going to do. But it's, and it's gone now. It's gone. Then he's not going to show up the rest of the show. So it's a good way to kind of get eyes on the product. But they're kind of there for that one thing that's not going to be there anymore. So, yeah. Uh, it's a gamble. That that's a gamble. Um, so <sighs> Cody wants a match by himself against A Town Down Under. He knows to Aldis that he doesn't even need a partner. And to me, that's how lowby that team is. I, singles guy, despite being the undisputed heavyweight champion, I don't even need anyone to whoop on you. I would be ticked off at that if I was that tag team. All this says that he needs a partner. Cody has to think it over. And I'm like, just get Randy and get it over with. Maybe Kevin's back from family leave. And to be honest with you, and I wrote it though, I do hope all is well with his fam. You know, his mom was not doing so well, so I hope things are better. Um, then Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. I didn't even care for this because of Carmelo, but I'm curious to see if this is a one-off or a build. 
And then I wrote, any idea of any idea of them disliking each other was dispelled with the epic dance they did at the opening. Hayes couldn't keep up with Andrade's lucha style. Andrade left him behind. He had to wait for him on three occasions. I was like, yeah, this, you know, too much cooperation. Andrade's trying to lead this guy who can't be led. I'm like, it, it, it's, what's the point? Andrade won with a twisting butterfly slam. He got the pin. I wish I hadn't seen, I didn't even want to see that much. So he got a contract signing hosted by Nick Aldis. Okay, so LA, LA Knight, he runs down uh, he and Logan's history, and Paul calls him out by his government name. You can hear a little sting with the crowd. You can see a little, you can see a sting with LA Knight. And then Logan runs down that everything else in Knight's life is, no, 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 my bad. Too many pronouns, pal. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, um, oh crap, I'm, I'm, I'm losing myself. This is bad, this is bad. Okay, yeah, Paul runs down to everything else in life, in uh, LA Knight's life is more important than the U.S. belt. And then he decides to expose everything of LA Knight's gimmick. You know, it's like you're a rock wannabe, yada, yada, you're doing this. And yada. yeah, I'm like, okay. I mean, like, if you don't know it, then what's wrong with you? Um, and then Paul cites that LA Knight hadn't achieved anything major in 20 years. And honestly, if you watch LA Knight's face, you can see that hurt. You can see that hurt. And. It hurt him so much, I thought about my own. I'm like, oh, well, you know what? Ellie and I can say I'm on TV. But, man, I was like, all he's got to do. Now, see, they ain't going to call out what they need to call out. But that's all right. I suppose you got to protect your company. But Knight calls him a fraud as a wrestler. Knight mentions Paul's brother having the balls to fight Tyson, but Paul doesn't have the balls to fight him. So Knight claims that the balls are not in Paul's family. Okay, so Knight has had enough, and the fans chant that they want them to fight because they knocked the clipboard out. It, 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 they're angry. They do the thing. Logan leaves the ring. Knight turns his back. Logan charges him. Knight beats the hell out of him, runs him off right before he gets his finisher. You know, same old, same old. I just wish L.A. Knight... L.A. Knight, LA Knight needs to drop the Steve Austin opening when he says so you want to talk about or I hear you want to talk about or I hear you talking in this ring about I get it I understand but he needs his own he needs his own you know even if, look they ain't told much you can really say before you sound like you're copying somebody else even if you're not but you need to let go of the obvious and find something different in any case, backstage, Mini Andrade talks to L.A. Knight, who had a good one in L.A. Knight. Like, if you want to get a hold, you want to get in touch with me, your mom's got my number. And I was like, ah, I've heard that back in the day, but it's still good. It's still a good, good zinger. It's, it's, it's all right. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, she was coming out for a match that I'm not going to watch. And I couldn't help but notice that her music sounds very familiar. And I wondered if Tiffany Stratton has the spot that if she was still in WWE, Sasha Banks would have had if she stayed. It was a long match because I kept skipping all over the place. Bailey comes in, distracts Tiffany by breaking up the Money in the Bank case, and then Meachine gets the roll up for the pin. And that, that's how that went. And it was all celebration and yay in the ring. I was, yeah, okay. So next we got uh, Solo Sokoa. He had a decent promo as he lays. It's all pre-tape, but he lays down the law on what will define the bloodline. And in short, if you are for Cody, you are against everything of the bloodline. If you're not for the bloodline, then by default, you are against everything of the bloodline. There you go. I mean, you want to just nutball it. There you go. So, um, <laughs> nutball, nutshell. Um, Owens, he's going to tag with Cody. And I got a question for that, for y'all, okay? It's a simple one on a slight issue. How can there be a mystery partner when the selection is so low, it's not a mystery, 
It's simply which. It's going to be Kevin or it's going to be Randy because you're not dealing with anybody else. Get a partner. It's going to be a mystery partner. Who will he get? I mean, it's obviously going to be one of the two. Or, I couldn't find anybody, but we got to have the match. So, ha, ha, ha. Did you look for anybody? Nope. Wasn't going to. Got to have the match. Can't, can't, can't leave the fans waiting. That's, that's, that's how you want to get away with it. And you go out there and you beat the hell out of the team. And there you go. Just Triple H it. So, I, know, I got another question. So, after what happened last week, why is there, so far, no sought after retribution from Cody and or Randy? You know, they, that was bad last week. That was brutal. I very much enjoyed it. Maybe after the next match or something, one of them will say something. I can only assume it will be Randy and Kevin against Tonga and Loa at SummerSlam. That's what I'm assuming. Or, or before it. Haven't seen them in the tag team. Maybe Tonga Loa is retraining. He's under retraining or something. Because his style is far away from WWE. And I mean far. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, so, Kevin Owens and Cody Rhodes versus A-Town Down Under. So, at one point, commentary talked about ATDU cutting off the ring and how that took them all the way to the tag titles. Here's my question. For y'all and, and for them, why didn't A-Town Down Under show that skill in the match where they lost the belts? And why didn't they show it in the return match that they lost? Just something for people to think about. They wait until now to cut the ring off, to beat down one person, a long-winded beat down. Just saying. Takes, you know, be consistent. Okay, so this tag team is so weak in WWE's eyes Cody got the hot tag and did everything he has not done in his singles matches. He pulled out everything from Dusty and Dustin Rhodes. Cody wins with Crossroads for the pin. All right. And I'm like, you know, just, you know, more needs to happen, you know, because... They, 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 this, this, this right here is so fairy tale, boring. It really is. So, then the bloodline comes to the ring. So now I'm waiting for the beat down, and I'm waiting for Randy to come in and beat up all the bloodline. That's what I'm waiting on. Cody and Kevin, they got it handled. They, you know, they plan to put Solo on onto the table. I'm like, okay, so y'all gonna get some revenge, or at least Cody. A little bit, but it would be for Randy. But then Jacob comes in and he takes care of business. Jacob, he he gets the hip attack on Kevin in the in the ring in the corner, and he and he screams at him, "You want to disrespect our tribal chief, the man that takes care of everything?" And then he does many many more severe, hard hitting hip attacks to Kevin before hitting the diving headbutt. So that put Kevin down for a good bit. Then. They powerbomb Cody onto the table, collapsing it. <laughs> Cody, I don't get, Cody, it's, it must be natural. Because they got Cody up. <laughs> and Cody looks back, and he glances at the table. You can see this little look on his face like, ah, shit. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. But he had to look back and see how far that table was so he could brace properly. I don't blame him. I don't blame him one bit. But they got the power bomb on Cody on the table. They collapsed it. Kevin is still trying to fight as they... And, and look, he, he crawled out the ring like, I, I just want some water. Just give me a little water. And they're like, we can give you some water. <laughs> it's just not going to be in the form that you think. It's going to be blood, sweat, and tears. That's where you can get your water. And Kevin, he's still trying to fight, and they horse collar him with the chair and ram him into the post. He's done. Him dead. So Jacob adorns the lay of leadership upon his tribal chief. So let's go and stand strong. And I thought, you know what? Great ending. This, 
This is good TV. I enjoyed that ending. And so with that, this has been Cedric for CRS and Commentary on Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And with that, I want y'all to be good, be chill, be safe. And we'll see you next time.